Hey guys, my name is Karis and welcome to my blog first show. Today's video, we are going to be discussing seven questions you must ask on a first date. Yeah. First dates can be nerve wracking from wanting to make a good first impression to looking your best to also not giving off that nervous or awkward vibe in front of your date, which is understandable. All of us has been there, done that, babe, got a t-shirt. And no matter how many dates we go on, we continue to go through that same cycle with every first date. Fast forward, your first date has turned into you guys exclusively dating and now becoming boyfriend and girlfriend. A year has passed, some with a breeze, others with some hiccups along the way. But nonetheless, you guys have been together for a year at this point. You've probably decided at some point after that one year mark that you want to live with one another so you move in with him he moves in with you or you guys get a place together whatever the case may be now two plus years are in and you guys have broken up for whatever reason you begin to think and reflect on the relationship and you come to the conclusion that me and this person have been together for two plus years and you realize that this person shouldn't have made it past the first date, if we're being honest. Let alone two, three, four plus years. But how many of us really go into a first date with intention? By intention, I mean asking the right questions to see if not only are you guys compatible, but does this person has the character to be who you're wanting or what you're looking for at this moment of time in your life? Digging deep to really find out how this person's temperament is, how this person's thoughts are, the person's family history, things that really matter. Going into every date with a game plan will help you to weave out the people that you are not on the same page with based on what it is that you're seeking for that moment in your life. If you're seeking to court, if you're seeking to casually date or exclusively date, what is it that you're looking for? But based on that, it's based on the questions that you should be asking this person in order to decipher and come to a conclusion as to whether or not this person is capable of giving you what it is that you're searching for. Going in with this mindset not only prevents you from wasting time and unnecessary trauma, but it also prevents you from getting into situations to where now you guys have a long-term commitment with one another. And when I say preventing long-term commitments, I mean that of bringing children into that situation. First days should be your scouting phase. Now, I'm not saying at all that you should not enjoy the moment, live in the moment and enjoy the date, but you should be conscious as to the reasoning why you're on this date and getting the answers that you're really wanting in order to decide whether you move forward with this person or not. And maybe you simply just don't know what questions to ask or how to ask the questions in a casual way that still keeps the mood and enjoyment there, but also you being able to get the answers that you're seeking. And to be honest, the number seven just looks better in titles. So I definitely gave you way more than seven questions. So I don't think you guys will be too mad about that. You're getting more than seven questions, babe. So kudos to you. <laughs> With these questions, I came up with the hamburger method. And with the hamburger method, you have the two buns and then obviously the meat in the middle, which is what everyone really wants. The two hamburger buns are for your light questions, like your fun questions, just to get the conversation going and to keep it light so that the conversations aren't too deep during the entire date. And your meat is going to be the questions that you really dive deep in a smart and strategic way to get the answers that you're wanting from this person. So think of the two buns as the fluff questions, the filler questions that you want to probably actually know about this person, but they aren't end all be all questions for you. Keep in mind that these questions are just starter questions. You can change them up how you want to according to your interest and what's important to you. Allow the conversation to flow, keep it natural, but also maintain control of getting the answers that you're wanting from this date. Your bun number one questions can be, what do you like to do for fun? What is your dream vacation? What is your favorite music and why? When it comes to the fluff questions, you don't have to really just go all out and be overwhelmed about what questions you're going to ask. Just ask the questions that you legitimately want to know to get to know that person, like what their personality type is. Are they introverted or extroverted? How do they handle stressful situations? Questions like that, that are broad and not too in-depth. And once you get to the point to where you're like, okay, we've broken the ice, now I can kind of try to figure out how to throw in the meat questions, which is number two. For example, in bun number one, he tells you his favorite music and 
he tells you why and his reasoning for why is his favorite music is maybe he says oh because my mama used to play this artist every saturday when she would make us get up at 8 a.m and clean the house if you're from a black family you already know like that's a that's a thing our parents did not play we had to get up clean if it wasn't saturday it was on sundays she would play her music and it would just be that and if he says something like that that's where your meat question would come in at which is the question that you really want to know that are important what's your family dynamic like what's your relationship with your mom what was it like as a child what's it like as an adult now do you guys get along um what's the family dynamic was your dad in the household how was that relationship do you have a relationship with your dad the questions that you ask regarding to their childhood are the questions that has pretty much shaped that person into the thoughts and feelings and their views on certain aspects when it comes to families and relationships pay attention to how he talks about his mom does he show her respect do they still get along now um, is it somebody that he talks to often like do they have a really close relationship or is he a mama's boy what type of relationship does he have and how does that relationship affect his life now as a man? Question number two that you should ask is, what did your last relationship teach you? What did it reveal about yourself? And what did it reveal about women? Now, this is important because it shows you whether this man will take accountability or not and how this relationship has affected him. Is he still emotionally scarred from this relationship by talking negatively about this person or what went on in the relationship? Is it something that still makes him emotional? You want to pay attention to his triggers when it comes to this relationship. And this question is, like I said, to help you to decipher whether or not this person is healed and ready to move on and how it has affected him in terms of how does he view women now that he's been through that relationship, they've broken up for whatever the reason may be, and if he's a man that takes accountability. If he sits there and tells you everything that she does and tells you nothing that he does, then that's a red flag because that's a sign he takes no accountability. One thing you don't want to ask is why that relationship ended because I know as women, people tell us all the time, do not tell a person what happened in your last relationship and what you accepted and allowed to go on in that relationship. And I'm sure that man is going to have that same theory in his head. You want to know what's important. What did that relationship teach you? How did you learn from this relationship? Did you learn or did you digress? And that's important when it comes to moving forward with someone and being with someone and taking on their emotional baggage. Number three, views on marriage. Now, this is an important one if you are a person who wants to be married. What is the time frame that he wants to be married in? What sparked his interest about you? What is it that he's looking for? Is he looking for something serious? Or is he wanting to just date and see where it goes? Ask them, do they want children? If they want children, how many? Does it align with what, what it is that you want? Do you want children or no? that tells you whether or not you can move forward with this person because you can't be with someone who wants children and you yourself don't want children you guys have to be on the same page when it comes to things like this that matters because that's going to cause a lot of problems and it's problems that will cause relationships to end if you're not on the same page there's no point in, in continuing going on dates and getting to know this person because for one you're not going to be able to change his mind and even if you can change his mind it's a risk that is 50 50 and you really don't want to take that risk because if you come to that and you find out that you cannot change his mind and that's something that you desire now you're going to either settle feel stuck or you're going to leave but there's still time that you wasted when you could have been dating someone with better intentions and who was on the same page as you does he have children already and if he does what's the co-parenting relationship like with the mother of his children do they co-parent in a healthy way or is it toxic is she jealous like will you have to deal with her being mad or feeling some type of way because he moved on are they still intimate with one with one another how long ago were they intimate with one another how do they respect each other's space boundaries and relationships if they were to get serious with other people those are the questions that need to be asked and answered and at this point, after asking the majority of those questions, you've now got enough information to have a pretty good stance on your decision on whether or not you guys will continue to communicate and continue to date and continue to get to know one another. Also, keep in mind, you don't want to end on such a heavy note with these deep-rooted questions. So that's why you go to the second hamburger bun 
so that you can end the date on a good night with good energy and good vibes and not the heavy deep things that you have just communicated about you can throw in questions like what does a relaxing day look like for you this is a fun one to end on some guilty pleasures like what are your guilty pleasures what is something that you would spend a lot of money on that a lot of people would say was ridiculous to spend that much money on for me personally i would spend money on a driver and somebody to pump gas like that's all i need i despise pumping gas so that's my guilty pleasure comment down below a guilty pleasure that you have i've definitely given you more than seven questions but you have a general idea as to the questions that you have in order to go into a date and be intentional and in asking those probing questions so that you can get the answers that you need in regards to determining the type of man you have and whether or not this man is compatible with you and if you guys are going to be going on other dates to further getting to know one another move slow and allow your phone conversations to be a method in the way in which you get the answers that you're seeking as well so that you can make an informed decision when it comes to your dating life. And also remember, you will not get everything that you need for this first night, but you will get a great idea as to whether or not you want to move forward with this person and continue to see where it's going. Time will always reveal all things. Pay attention to those red flags and allow your spirit to guide you in the direction that you need to go and the cautiousness that you need to take when it comes to dating an individual in general. Be open and engaging with this person. Don't be so stuck on, oh, I need to get these questions. Oh, I gotta get this question in. I gotta get this question in. Allow it to flow and allow the questions to come up casually, but also, like I said, be strategic and make sure you take control of the conversation so that you can get the answers that you need so that you can make an informed decision on whether or not this person will move on from the first date or if the first date is it, babe. Comment down below if you guys want a video on how to date without an emotional attachment. With us being emotional women, I think this is a video that we all need because we all go into these dating situations with our emotions and not with our head. So if that's a video that you're interested in, comment down below and let me know. But that's all for this video. Thank you guys so much for watching. Don't forget to like, comment, subscribe, and pull up on my blog for show. I'll see you guys in the next video. Love you guys. Bye.